Hi, it's Chris here from the EcoMod project. Uh, this video tutorial is going to look at uh, PicPrep's uh, periodic error analysis uh, tab. As you can see, I've already loaded some data uh, into PicPrep. Uh, in this case, there's, there's quite a significant amount of data and a lot of cycles worth. Uh, and I want to take you through the various displays and uh, numbers and things that are shown on this this particular screen. Okay, first thing to look at is is this graph here where I've got the cursor. Um, if I uncheck all these boxes, so we just see the raw data. This is the data as loaded in from the the log file. We can adjust this slider here to zoom out, and as you can see. There was some kind of drift associated with it. Now this 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 is is quite normal. Um, it could well be drift due to polar alignment, or perhaps the tracking rate not quite being um, spot on. Uh, from the point of view of periodic error analysis, it's not really of uh, interest to us. Um, it's it's a linear drift, or at least over this time frame, it appears linear. It could be a, a very low frequency. Um, cyclical drift, uh, cyclical movement, but for all intents and purposes, it's, it's appearing as a linear drift. Um, so what we do is we, we apply linear re regression, uh, and that straightens out this raw data um, to give this 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 blue line. So I'm just going to uncheck that raw data now, so to keep the, the screen less cluttered. So if we zoom in on this 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 blue data, um, you'll see in this display to the right here, all of these individual cycles of data have been stacked on top of each other. And as you can see, they're they're in broad agreement of of, of the shape of what's going on here, which means they they all have a common characteristic, and that happens to be uh, because the time base has been set uh, to the worm period. That's due to the worm. Um, we can fiddle with this time base, we can go to any other time base we want, uh, or we can pick out pre-selected periods. Um, and that can also help to see if, if, if some of these things are present. Uh, okay. This data itself, as we can see, it's easier to see in, in, in these, these graphs, there's a lot of jitter associated with it because of, of scene conditions when the data was recorded or perhaps some sort of jitter in the centroid calculations uh, that are being made by the data loggers. Uh, it's certainly not likely to be mechanical in origin. So what we really want to do is, is, is remove that. Uh, so we get a clearer picture of, of, of what's going on with our, our mount. And that's done by this um, smoothing section. Now, Peck Prep uses fast Fourier transforms. Fast Fourier transforms basically uh, allow any waveform to be broken down into uh, the combination of a number of different sine waves, and each sine wave has different amplitudes, periods, and phases, but by com combining them you, you can reproduce uh, any waveform. And because a sine wave is a characteristic uh, of a uh, rotational movement, um, if you can identify those sine waves you can also identify uh, the principal mechanical components within, uh, or that are causing this um, particular uh, trace. We can also use fast Fourier transforms, having broken it down into a number of sine waves and things, to actually filter out uh, high frequencies, low frequencies, or, or filter out things based on am amplitude. And that's what this section here does. The easiest way to do this is, is to apply the auto filter button. Now, what this display is showing are all the various mount periods. If I bring on my cursor, you can see uh, that this is saying there is a signal present that's got a significant peak at around 494 seconds. Well, that kind of corresponds to our worm, which is coming in at 479. So 
you know the the peak is is somewhere in between here it's 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 a very coarse analysis um this particular uh, screen but it does allow you to identify the main peaks that are present in your system and apply filters based upon them you don't want to filter out anything that that, that you think is important uh, you can zoom out on this so we can see there are peaks all the way down here and you might consider that you don't really want those filtered out um, and you can zoom in as well so the easiest way is just hitting the auto filter you can then manually tweak that so if we decide that perhaps we'd like to see some of these peaks down here we can reduce that magnitude filter until they're all present um, you can adjust the high pass filter the high pass filter uh, is the one that takes out the low frequencies so if I back this off you can see that I'm getting more of the low frequency signal in there uh, and the low pass filter is the one that takes out the high frequencies um, currently there is it's, it's set to none but we, we could put a high because um, all of these are actually being filtered by magnitude um, the other way you can set the filters is to say well if I want to um, filter everything below this point I just put my cursor there hit the set button and it will take out anything there and below if I want to do it on uh, low pass anything from there onwards I just hit the set button yep. and if I want to say I only want uh, anything above that level of magnitude yep. so that's another way in which you can um, set the filters personally I'm just going to go for the auto filter uh, and back this off a bit so we get some of these extra peaks. What you can also do is, if I just remove this from the screen, is you get a list down here of all the, the, the 10 most significant peaks within your data. You can also remove uh, those signals by unchecking them. So if I say, well, the, the worm is the most significant frequency. If I take the worm out there, you can see you get something that looks like that. Now there's still a pattern in there, and that's due to 182 seconds. If I if I move that down to 182, you can see yes, there certainly is another signal in there. That there we go. Okay. Uh, I should say the smooth display is is what you see when the blue uh, data, the linear, linearly regressed uh, data, is has the uh, smoothing filter applied. The noise is the difference between the two. So if we look at the noise now, we can see that we've actually taken out a low frequency component, um, which is this frequency here we're saying well we're not particularly interested in that I don't know what that is but it's 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 not directly to do with the worm drive itself um, could be some sort of bearing problem uh, but all this other jitter is probably seeing now if we see any other periodic uh, signal within here then we've probably got too much of a filter on there we've taken out something meaningful this all looks pretty random apart from this low frequency um, uh, curve. If it's looking random that's a good good sign that we've got the filters in the right place. Um, okay, so I'm going to take off the noise for the moment and the raw minus of the trend. So our original data came in looking like that by applying linear, linear regression and by applying our f smoothing filters we've actually ended up with something that we believe is the mechanical characteristics of the mount um, so all the wind and seeing fluctuations and all, all the sort of random stuff um, has has been removed and this we believe is 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 the characteristic signature of our mount these displays here uh, you can do things with them if you right click on them you can save them as bitmaps you can also um, put labels down so if you want to put a title on there you just say add title um, um, 
make it as big as you want, put it in a color, you know, usual sort of stuff. And it'll put it on there and then you can save it as a bitmap if you want. Uh, as soon as you redraw that, it'll disappear. So if I do that, it'll disappear. You have to put them on again. Um, same with this graph here, you can save it. If you right click on this one, what actually happens is it it changes um, its display from being discrete to continuous. Okay, the data down the side here um, is based upon your smooth data. So if you can see what the periodic error is, um, what the uh, maximum rate of change of error is, that's useful for guiding. You know, it's, it's, it's telling you that although it's going up and down and it looks a bit odd, um, it's actually only moving at a rate of 0 0.06 times sid sidereal rate. So you don't particularly need a fast uh, guiding rate to correct for, for this movement. That's probably about it. There's, there's some extra data telling you what the worm period is, the um, number of, of, of samples that were taken, and what the sample interval was. Uh, in this case, it was 0 0.07 seconds, which is quite fast. Peck Prep loves data. The more data you can give it, the better. Um, if you can capture data at a fast rate, do it. Um, because the more data Peck Prep has, um, the more uh, analysis it, it can do on that data. Okay, uh, that'll do for this uh, video. Next video we'll look at the periodic error correction tab.